feeling a bit parched I am. I will quench the thirst with lollies. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Hello humans, my name is Dale Kingsmill and today I'm sitting in a different place to usual. Um, the light bulb in the half of the room that I usually film in at my desk is uh, it's out at the moment and so all the lighting is super weird over there so... Ta-da! Solution? Question mark? Just a quick story today. Today, I would like to talk about the story of Polycrates and his overwhelming good luck. Polycrates was the ruler of Samos, and uh, after a couple of different military campaigns in which absolutely every single thing went his way, we're talking weather, we're talking numbers, we're talking, you know, the riches plundered afterwards. Every single possible aspect of this went in his favour. And in fact it was a trend kind of building up throughout his whole life. No matter what he did, he had the best of luck. He won competitions he hadn't entered. He won lotteries he hadn't bought tickets for. I mean, not those two things, but you get the point of what I'm saying. Basically, he was Tyche's favourite. One day, Polycrates was writing to his friend in Egypt, Amasis, to let him know about how weird it was that he just kept having such good luck. All of this good fortune, how was it happening? This is so weird, man. And Amasis wrote back right away saying, Guy, I am feeling some bad juju over here with all this good luck, alright? You know, it's not natural. The way that things are supposed to be, you meant to have some good luck and some bad luck, some good luck and some bad luck, and it keeps it even. If you just keep having good luck, then when all the bad luck comes to you, because there ain't no one who has no bad luck, that bad luck is gonna come, and it is gonna come smashing down on you, crashing down from above. And I kind of mean that literally, because we all know it's probably gonna be the gods. You know, if, if Taiki is favoring you here, Nemesis ain't gonna be far behind, alright buddy? So, so what should I do? What should I do? I don't know how to fix this. Amasis thought about it and he went, alright, here's, here's what you do. Okay, you find your favorite thing. The absolute best thing that you own in this entire world. And somehow, you gotta lose that thing. You gotta have some kind of unfortunate happening in which that thing is ripped from your grasp and you never see it again. Alright, it's your only chance. Come on, man. You gotta do this. Do it for for the greater good. Yeah. Yeah, thought Polycrates. That'll do it. You're right, you're right, I'll do that. He rushed off to his bedroom to find his favorite ring. It was it was an emerald and golden signet ring that was a gorgeous piece of jewelry by anyone's standards. Then he called up a fifty man what are they called? The boats. The the rowan. It was a boat that needed 50 people to row it. It was a big ship, a big, like, warship thing. As a placeholder for the actual boat name, I'm going with Trireme. I remember that from my Age of Mythology days. Hmm. But he gets this big boat, at least 50 people manning it, right? And he says, just go. Sail. Sail out to sea, far as you can, to the deepest water you can. We need to get out of here. And they're like, but where are we going? No, no. Just go into the middle of the ocean. And so they do, they obey their king and they row out to the middle of nowhere and Polycrates, making sure that everybody on board is watching him, puts on this grand show as he drops his ring overboard accidentally. It was a little bit rose at the end of Titanic when she throws the heart of the sea or whatever it's called, the big necklace, she throws the chunky necklace into the water. Oh no, said Polycrates, woe is me. I have lost my ring to the depths of the briny sea. What an unfortunate turn of fate. I suppose no one's good luck can last forever. I have lost my very favorite ring. I guess that my luck has turned already. And there's no need for a certain goddess to come and take vengeance on I, a simple king. And I went on like that for a while. A week later, he sat down to dinner, where he was served a big old fish. A fisherman had caught a massive, beautiful fish and thought, you know what, this is too good for the markets, I'm gonna give this to the king. And his cooks prepared it for him and they brought it out, and as soon as Polycrates cut into that fish, what came out of its stomach? 
the ring. Of course it did, of course. Of course, the one in a million chance that, that a fish would find the golden ring, that it would swallow it, that it would then be caught by a fisherman from this city and then given to the king to eat so that he would have his magnificent ring back. Of course, Taiki was clearly not letting this go that easily. Polycrates, really unsure of what he could do, once again pleaded with his friend Amasis from Egypt for any kind of advice he could give. It didn't work, man! It didn't work! The ring came back in a fish! I can't shake this! What am I meant to do? I don't know, but you gotta keep this away from me, alright? I, you are on your own here. I tried, I tried, and we can't be friends anymore. I'm sorry, we just can't be friends anymore. Amasis? Amasis, no, no, don't leave me, don't leave me. And unfortunately for Polycrates, Amasis was right. Uh, when the bad luck came around, it came around hardcore because Nemesis had been preparing a big ol' army. And I'm pretty sure Polycrates ended up uh, impaled. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's just a short story for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a fun little one. I quite like it. I've not been uploading on schedule lately. I'm sure that you've all noticed, uh, especially after I put up that 10 seconds of me running and screaming the other day. It's assignment season. We're coming to the end of session. You, you know how it is. But the good news is I'm wearing alien socks. Oh, falling over. Falling over now. Anyhow, if you did enjoy the video, then consider giving it a thumbs up because that helps the video out a bunch and it's super easy for you to do. Another thing that you can do is to share the video on your favorite social media website. I have a bunch of those accounts myself and I have links to them in the description below should you be interested in following me there. Or, of course, my favorite thing of all, sharing this video with someone you know, in real life, who is interested in mythology. A friend of mine was telling me today that she, she pointed out my videos to her myth node friend, and apparently her friend is enjoying them, so that just makes me the happiest in the world. So I'm happy. I can't think of anything else that I need to say, so I suppose in the meantime, that's it. I'm done. Email this to your grandma, and I will see you some other time.